Welcome back. Welcome back. High mood, big tension. This is a great day on Salute to Troy. I couldn't be more excited. Hey, we finally got a complete game. <laughs> we finally got a complete game. There wasn't more a game more complete than what we saw last weekend. Salute to Troy podcast, cultural, big feel. How you feeling, Phil? I'm feeling fantabulous. I'm feeling like the number four team in the nation. I'm feeling like the climb, the slow climb to the top has continued. We got one more. We, we've spoken about this on this show at, at nauseum to take things one week at a time and to take them in tests. And uh, this week, Friday, Pac-12 championship, our boys get a do-over, an opportunity to write a past wrong, an opportunity to get Utah on a neutral field and a neutral setting and, and to beat them this time and give them the loss that they so justly deserved the first time and to continue our path to the college football playoffs. No, they're for sure going to get that get back. And the college football playoff is looking, is looking realistic. Um, the question is, the question is, they win on Friday, right? So they win tomorrow because this will be released. This will be released on Thursday. They win tomorrow, right? They win tomorrow. We have to wait until Sunday morning. Are they number four or number three? Let's just say the top four, the top four teams win. Are yeah, they number four, four or number three? I disagree. They're number three. Uh, uh, now, if you're talking about uh, where everybody else had them ranked versus where I think they are, they're absolutely. I, I think, I think there's a case to be made for number two. Number n- number two. If you're, if, you're number, if you're number two or number three, there's no, there's no, there's no. There's no difference because it's in, the same in game. Terms of who you, yeah, in terms of who you play, no. But if you're talking about who you asked me, who did, how did I think that where they were? Because I thought you were asking me where did the AP have them ranked. If you're asking me where did I think they are, I think that they're – I know they're better than TCU, and I think they're better than Michigan. No, no, no. They went – all four teams went Friday night. Where do you think they're going to have them ranked? Where do you think the college football playoff people will have them ranked? On third. Second, third. I agree, and let me tell you why. Because money talks, and that, and that two three game is the Rose Bowl. Mm-hmm. So that two three game is the Rose Bowl, and mm-hmm. they understand that if they put USC Michigan in the Rose Bowl, it's a traditional Big Ten Pac twelve game, which the Rose Bowl is. They can fill the Rose Bowl up, generate a whole bunch of money. And whoever wins moves on and plays at SoFi, and it is what it is. But in reality, they know they can get a lot of money out of this 2-3 game. Mm -hmm. And they also know that if SC, who matches up better against Michigan, Mm -hmm. (laughs) plays Michigan in the Rose Bowl, plays in the national championship at SoFi, Mm -hmm. they could also generate a bunch more money. Money. That's, More money. That's just my conspiracy. That's my and, cons- I'll, and I'll take it a step further because I'm a conspiracy theorist and I like that type of stuff. Today, right before the right before we started this podcast, and we this is Wednesday, uh the NCAA announced that the final hurdle had been cleared to move the playoffs to expand them to 12 teams because the Rose Bowl has finally agreed in contract to be part of the six bowl, the six uh, college football games, that the playoff bowl system that needed to be approved in order for it to happen. Right. So, and, and you know what the big, biggest hurdle – it wasn't even money. The biggest hurdle was – so you know they don't play the Rose Bowl on Sunday, like right. traditionally they don't play it on Sunday. So the biggest hurdle was like they wanted to play Sunday games, and the Rose Bowl was like, no, we're not doing that. We're not breaking that tradition. And so the fact that they finally agreed and got it done, 
it is good, but they threatened well, to take him out of the TV deal. Is what ended up happening. They all oh, out of the ABC deal. Out of the, yeah, and the twenty twenty six upcoming deal said they were taking him out. So are they back in it? Yeah, they're back in it. They're back in it. Everything's everything's full systems go. We will have for twenty twenty four and twenty twenty five. It will be a twelve team playoff system. That will be interesting. But that's the future. Let's talk about Friday night. Trojans going to Legion Stadium. Your home turf. Woo they, what is it? What, what is it's the ah goddamn, I'm not a Star Wars fan. They the, Death Star. the Death Star. There you go. They go into the Death Star. They play Utah. They lost week five against Utah. Week five or six. Five or six, yeah. They lost week five to six against Utah. Gave up 200 yards to a tight end. They lost in the final 50 seconds of the game on a drive. Questionable penalty calls. But there was a great equalizer. I will say this. There was two equalizers in that game that we saw earlier in the year. First equalizer is something that you can't coach against. You can't predict. You never know what's going to happen. SC got beat up, and they got beat up early. Mm -hmm. They lost both of their receivers. They lost Gentry. They lost Goforth. Travis Dye wasn't really Travis Dye. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, he hadn't got started. He had, that was probably the last game before he started getting things going. Well, I just mean like in that game, though, he just wasn't wasn't that – Great. Like, seems like he was banged up a little bit too. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the second thing is altitude is a motherfucker. And a yes, lot of people <laughs> I don't want to understand that. As yeah. soon as I put you 3,000 feet above sea level, a lot changes in your body. And a lot of people don't understand that, which was a great thing about Caleb Williams playing a lot of games prime time because everybody's like, Ah, uh, the Pac-12. We actually have six teams ranked in the top 25 tied mm -hmm. with the SEC. You know what I mean? Like, we're like, oh, shit. Like, these teams are better than you think. Mm -hmm. Now, you're playing at 1,000 feet. It was maybe about 2,000 feet, 1,500 feet maybe, but it's not that bad. Right. Um, you're playing on a neutral site, equal amount of fans. <sighs> this is for the championship. I will say this. SC right now is... is they're white hot. They're extremely hot. And a lot of people are saying, well, it was a dog fight against UCLA. Let's stop there. It wasn't really a dog fight. Don't let the score fool you. They should have won by 19 points, or even if they didn't, they won by three. They should have won by at least nine points. Yeah, they should have won by nine if, with the field goals that they missed. The field goals, right? And so, like, mm -hmm. The game wasn't as close as it was. And, like, when SC ran away, they ran away, like, and there was no catching them. I really see that happening tomorrow night. I see them, like, Utah playing above their head, and they're making stops, making stops, and all of a sudden, SC just gets away. I'm going to tell you why. And I've been talking about this for a very long time, and nobody really believed me. And... Now he got his shot, and he is a bruiser. He runs hard. He runs downfield. That's number six, Austin Jones. Power football is a tough game to play. And mm -hmm. now he's worn down in the pass game and in the run game. SC's going to just wear them down. And you're seeing it with a lot of their games. Like Earlier in the year, let me put it like this. Earlier in the year, they were – just score fast and go, go, go. Now they're not scoring on first drives and things like that, and that's fine because now they're in the wear you down game. We're just going to wear you down, and then once you're worn down, next thing you know, you looked up, you're down two scores. Three scores. But now we're on the field celebrating, and Tau Man is on the sideline going fucking ham. Tau Man. Shout out to Tau Man. Said, I, you want to know how USC is doing? Look for Tau Man. When, <laughs> when them towels are waving and towels is flying, you know USC is kicking ass. Uh, Always look out for Tau Man. Hey, before we get moving, uh, basketball is back, and Bet Online remains your number one source for all your sports betting needs this season. 
You'll always find the latest odds, team matchup, info, player news, game trends at betonline.com. And, and as your continued source for all your wagering information, BetOnline features live betting, free contests, and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest and easiest way to bet for your favorite sports events, whether it's NFL, NBA, NHL, MMA, tennis, boxing, or even golf. Head to betonline.ag to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure you use promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, to receive your reward. BetOnline, where the game starts. If you need to look at down there on our screen, get that 50% promo code. Hey, so what are you looking for tomorrow night? Tell me what you want to see. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I'm ahead of myself. Let's talk about Notre Dame. What you think of the Notre Dame game? I'm, I'm going to give you a bigger challenge. What do you think of the Notre Dame game and take number 13 out? What do I think of the Notre Dame game and take number 13 out? I think that Austin Jones was a, was a big part of that win and that he delivered, he delivered what we could have expected from Travis Dye. I also felt like they they did they were able to get a a different a more physical look and and physicality has kind of been the one thing that's given them some problems throughout this season and they're going to see some more of it against Utah. And I felt like they were able they were able to match Notre Dame's intensity, they were able to keep them down, they were able to like you said continue to wear them down and impose their will. And ultimate Notre Dame tried to go to the tight end, and it looks like uh, Alex Grinch and the defense, while they may not have had a plan initially, they were able to come up with an adjustment to make it so that they could stop the tight end or prevent him from, let's say, let's they mitigated his involvement, and. I think that I really think that the defense made stepped up and did a lot. Kalen Bullock once again is back as the man with the plan and uh, having Gentry back and having the linebacker play. I I really thought that the defense was probably when you take out number thirteen, the defense was one thing that really stood out to me. I will I I will say this, and we talked about it. We talked about it on Saturday night. <laughs> And I've been looking for this all year, all year. I'm saying when they do it, you'll notice you'll notice the difference in this team. When it finally happens, you'll notice the difference in this team. This was the first time all year USC played a complete game. Like from every phase of the game, from special teams, offense, and defense, they played a 100% complete game. Like they finished the game. They did everything they needed to do. Lincoln Riley ran midline. When Caleb Williams scored on that first one, when Austin Jones got blasted, and he ran right behind him, like great calls, like oh man, like you, you've been. I, I shouldn't say you. I've been wondering what it would look like for SC to play a complete game. I'm like, they just haven't played a complete game. Offense wasn't all the way there. Defense wasn't all the way there. Like we finally saw it, and that's USC. That's the USC. Like I've grown up seeing, like. That it was like you watch that game, you're like, oh, they're back, right? <laughs> like the Trojans are back. Like, that's the USC that you're used to seeing. Just a complete game on offense and defense. Like they gave up some chunk plays, and that happens. And the, but the thing about the defense was they were able to control their chunk plays. How often can you control your chunk plays? And they were able to control their chunk plays, right? They and offense did what offense does, right? So them playing a complete game is a scary football team. They play complete tomorrow night. We're going to Pasadena. I don't have a chance. Yeah. 100%. They don't have a chance if USC plays the complete game. And and I'm glad that you said that because they're going to get a – the Utah's going to try to test them. They're going to they're gonna try to overwhelm them at the line of scrimmage with numbers. They're gonna try. They're gonna try to. They're gonna try to to disguise what they're doing and get SC to chase guys all over the field and forget about Cam Rising like they did in the last game. And I I really sincerely hope that Alex Wrench is studying the film of what they did to him and what uh, and how they've progressed since that time, and how ha has a much better plan for Dalton Kincaid because that that was that was the difference maker. No, 100% it was. And, and, and it was schematic. But my thing is, like, 
I just hope they just go to four down linemen. They go four down linemen, and then and then and then just who do you know who leads the NCAA in sacks? I believe it's Tuli. Yes, Tooley, yes. Like go put make him get isolated. Put your players in the best situation possible to win. Get that dude isolated. Go four down. Have him go after the get after the quarterback. Right. Of course they're going to slide. And if you slide and he gets double teamed, well, guess what? That gives somebody else an opportunity to make a sack, right? So, right. like that, those opportunities are the, like the ones I'm looking for. Like, I think like if they just ran a true four two five, ran a true like match coverage, cover three, cover three stops everything. If you don't believe me, ask Nick Saban. He's the one that says cover three stops everything, right? So, right, right. like so. It's, it's like, just run cover three. Don't over kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. Don't overdo it. Stop getting all fancy. You see what happened when Lincoln Riley got fancy against Notre Dame down the red zone with the double pass and all that. Like, just mm -hmm. like on defense, just keep it as simple as possible. Make them think less and just let them play fast, right? You do those types of things. And Dalton Kincaid's draft stock just drops, right? Kim Rising draft stock stops, like <clears throat> four stops. And we've been talking about this all year. Four stops, mm -hmm. right? And most yep. of most of the times when we get four stops, those four stops are two of the four are turnovers. Yep. Right. So like don't change. Get four stops. Get the turnovers that, that you've been getting. You you have a plus twenty two turnover margin. Like do everything you've been doing that got you to this point, right? Stop trying to change it and trying to split the atom. And just bite the apple. <laughs> like it's not that hard. Just bite the apple. There you go. So keep keep it consistent with what you're doing. Attack and, and don't try to do too much uh, outside of what it is that's already working. Um, they, I, I would love to see them stick at a four man line because honestly, I don't think the three three five that they've been running all season long is going to be as effective against Utah. And and they adopted some different. They adopted some more four down linemen. They adopted some different philosophies when playing Notre Dame in order to get more of a physical presence up front to shut down the run. And they need to continue to do that against Utah. So you, you Utah is going to do this. And if 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 I'm winning him, I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to find out how tough you really are, because. Mm -hmm. For the past two weeks, you've been playing tough football, but are you really that tough? You know what I mean? Like, I play great yeah. football. I, I, I come out with three tight ends, and I run power, and I run counter, and I pretty much just play to hit you in the mouth, right? And then play action mesh. They're right. So that that's one thing I, that's one thing that's going to for sure show. And, like, if you're going to play that counter football game, then run it. Let's see what you can do if <clears> – <throat> We're gonna. If you want to, pretty much get into a slugfest, you, you have to prove with a team like Utah that you can stand in a slugfest. But mm -hmm. here's the difference, though. Here's the difference: Utah is George Foreman, and USC is Muhammad Ali. USC has more than power; they also have speed and finesse. You get what I'm saying? So I don't. They don't have to live in that power counter game. They don't have to run the ball down the throat because they have they have a, a future Heisman Trophy winner. They got two receivers that are back. Mario Williams is back. Jordan Addison is back, right? Plus, you got Taj Washington. You got Michael Jackson. You got Kyle Ford, who I was high on. And I'm going to tell you this right now about Kyle Ford, and you can mark my words. Kyle Ford is probably going to go in the fourth or fifth round, and he's going to have the best career that anybody's ever seen because that dude is big. And fast and can catch the ball so pure. But you got Kyle Ford. You got uh who else? You, they got so many. I just can't. Oh, you got Relique Brown. Relique Brown, you starting to see him grow up a little bit, right? Like they're taking reps because I think they're doing he was doing too much and they're giving him little chunks for him to get an opportunity to make a big play, right? He doesn't have to be the hero anymore. Right. Now, one one name that you left mysteriously absent. And I and as you said, mark my words. And, and at 19 sec 19 minutes and 55 seconds in this program, I will stand on this. And I will tell you all right now that the key to the Utah game is going to be Brendan Rice. 
Brendan Rice has not been getting the targets that he should be getting. I've been watching him for the last couple of weeks. Teams have been leaving him singled up to the wide side of the field, and he has been getting open. And he's been getting open quite a bit. He hasn't, uh, obviously, with all of the other firepower that you have in different areas, they would be the first people to get, get the looks in the progression scale. But Brendan Rice is going to be a problem, and he Utah is not going to be able to punk him. He's too big, he's too physical, and it's about time that Lincoln Riley could put a put something in the game plan to start feeding him, especially if you can isolate him, because that's part of that's part of it right off the bat, is he is always isolated no matter where he goes. And if he's winning his bat his one-on-one battles, then he needs to be fed. He needs to hang on to the football. And this will be the game that Brendan Rice makes a name for himself. The crazy part is all year I've been saying Brandon Rice is going to win the game for us. Just wait. Just wait. Are you telling me that this is the game that Brandon Rice I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. You, yeah. you can say it. Maybe I've been the jinx. So you say it. And, and, and that'll be good, right? Mm-hmm. I will say the other thing. Uh, man, I, I forget dude's name. But dude is a bowling ball. And he's going to be good, too. And he's only a freshman. Number 22, the running back. I don't know what his I know who you're talking about, but I don't know what his name is either. But yeah, that dude that dude is gonna be nice for us in yeah. the years to come. And 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 so that's the thing about the Trojans, and, and we'll have this show, we'll recap this end of the season. But if we were to just recap right now and you really look at USC, they're so young. Right? They're so young, like they have so much coming back. And hopefully Lincoln Riley does a good job of building a foundation. Because after next year, they're all going to leave. So hopefully that's something to come in. And and, and if we, we might have to take an eight to three year, but I'm good with it. That's neither here nor there. We're not talking about that. We're talking no. about Vegas. We're talking about Pac-12 championship. Go ahead, say what you're going to say. No, you're talking about it. You're saying it right. You're talking about Vegas, Pac-12 championships. We're talking about 2022. We're talking about right now. We're talking about a team that was awful last year that in one year, Lincoln Riley has come in, got us, brought us a Heisman, a Heisman Trophy finalist, and a and a top four team, a, a top four team poised to enter the college football playoffs. They're playing for the the conference title. The, the winning is back. It came back before either of us thought it would. I thought that I I thought that the potential was there, but we had to see it. I didn't know how the defense I, uh, at the beginning when we were watching the spring game and recapping that I will say I said that the deep they're only going to go as far as the defense can, can will allow them to go. The offense can carry the day, but they will need the defense to finish games off. A year ago on November 29th, Lincoln Riley was hired. And I was like one of the biggest things that ever happened and people didn't understand. And Oklahoma, all, all, all my friends that I like play with SC with and mm-hmm. I, I talked to, we knew this would be the greatest hire. We knew greatest. this is what SC needed. Greatest. The question was, the question was, how long would it take? And none of us would have thought that you would take a team and you would win seven more games than you won the previous season. None of us would have thought that, right? They won four, four, they won four games last year. Now, eight more games. Eight more games. They they were they're eight games better than they were last year. Those eight games have them playing in a conference championship, which can lead to them playing in the college football playoff. SC has never played in the college football playoff. And the one year that they were eligible to play in the college football playoff, they were on probation, so they couldn't even have postseason play. Mm -hmm. It took a year, one year for Lincoln Riley to turn this thing around. I did not think it was going to happen that fast. And the fact that it did happen that fast If I'm leaking Riley, I'm turning on every offer and I'm staying there. And I'm trying my best 
to top Pete Carroll's legacy. I'm trying my best to top Paul Robertson's legacy. I'm trying my best to top. Uh, how do I keep forgetting the name of the goddamn coach? They named Robinson. Huh? John Robinson. Every legacy that that's been there, and on top of that, I'm trying to beat Nick Saban's status because I'm putting a here. Okay, so here's the deal: when you leave Oklahoma, when you leave Oklahoma. And you're like, why would you do that? Why would you do that? When you leave Oklahoma, and then this is why. There's John McKay. I'm trying to top John McKay's status, Pete Carroll's status. You leave Oklahoma, this is why. They put you in the best situation possible. Best. They put you in the best situation possible. You can't do that anywhere else. Mm -mm. I can't yeah. speak. Nick Saban's job is not available. Georgia's not was not available. Texas was not on the same, not in the same stratosphere as SC. Uh, Lincoln Riley, the uh, when he when it was announced that he was going to be that he was leaving Oklahoma to come to SC. I I was covering Cal at the time, and I was like, and I was like, man, fuck Carl, but uh, I was like this. This move is so huge, not only for the Pac-12, but for California football, for, for West Coast football. It has brought back all of the all of the, the hoopla, the aura, all of the all of what USC stood for offensively and as a whole. And he has delivered on virtually everything that you thought. That he would deliver, that he would bring to this team, everything. You, and you already kind of saw the aura at the spring game. You're like, all right, this is a little bit better. Hopefully, they stick around. You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden, they get out, they blow out Rice, they win some games, and then next thing you know, you look up and you're like, these dudes are climbing up the rankings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, and here's the thing: they, they not only that, they quietly climbed up the rankings, very quietly climbed up the rankings. Now everybody's talking about them. Mm -hmm. Two weeks ago, people weren't talking about they deserve to be in. I was, we were, yeah, we yeah. Were. But now all of a sudden, it's like you got Kurt Persson saying, "This is one of the best teams in college football. They deserve to be in." I don't understand how you could leave them out. Even I, I, go ahead, go ahead, finish. I'm sorry. He even quoted and said, even if they lose the conference championship, I don't see how you leave this team out because they could recover. Like, this is Kurt Herbstreit saying this against Notre Dame, right? Like, <laughs> all of a sudden, everybody's for the Cardinal and go. You know, it's easy when you watch all of the heroes that were supposed to be the front runners start falling away. And this is the part of the season that I love the most is the fight to the finish. As as all of the we've had all of the ones and twos and all of the all of the flip flopping, and now you got teams who are final. They're no longer playing any cream puffs. The schedule the schedule is all conference opponents. Now we're in the championship rounds, and we're heading into the playoffs. And SC has continued to show you what an offensive juggernaut it is. The defense is leading the nation in turnovers. You got the nation's leading sack, the sack leader in the nation is on your defense. And it, it was a time where we, where we were asking, are they ready? Are, are, is, is this team good enough to be in the CFP? Are they good enough to win it all? And the answer to that is yes, they are. And they've proven it week after week after week after week. And we got one more week to go. One, one more week, week to go. go. Three, one actually. More. Well, we got to win this game, and then then we get the 15 practices before the bowl game. But we, we got to take care of Utah. Before we wrap this thing up, Phil, let me know. Give me – Give me your keys to tomorrow's night game for SC to be the Pac-12 champion. Stopping Dalton Kincaid, 
uh, getting get Brandon Rice has got to have one to two touchdowns, and we've got to see and we've got to see Caleb Williams do his thing. And the defense has got to get their two turnovers. Okay, I, I, I'll argue the two turnover one because getting two turnovers a game is really hard. That's really, it hasn't, really hard. For, it hasn't been for SD. <laughs> that, I, I, that's true. But I'm some, not, I'm, some of them, some of them, are, some of them are, are are right place, right time. Like Saturday, that fumble, go for it, right place, right time. You know what I mean? Like the picks, I get, but two turnovers is really hard. But I will say this: I wouldn't be so much focused on Dalton Kincaid because I do know that they should fix that problem. They have film of them to fix their problem. My here, here, here's my key to the game. Four man rush at all times mm-hmm. with some pressures. Run the ball. You ready? And make Cam Rising beat you. Mm. Make Cam Rising. Isn't he the one that beat him last time? I disagree. I think Dalton Kincaid in a bad scheme beat him. Throwing, throwing six yards, throwing six yard curls to a tight end that's wide ass open is not you beating me. That's bad scheme. Yes, that is. You know what I mean? Like that's bad scheme. And this you're playing, you're gonna play a healthier team than you played last time because they've been out and they just played one game. Like this, this I, I make I want to see if Cam Rising is good enough to beat me. You know what I mean? Like if the game came down to it, if it was Caleb Williams versus Cam Rising, who's gonna come out on top? That's what I want Caleb to get. Williams. <laughs> that's Caleb what Williams. You get what I'm saying? Like, make and, and I'll expand on that, and I'll say this, and this will be my last thing for this particular thing. Utah caught USC, and I just got through saying this on my last podcast, is a cliche in football as old as time itself. It ain't who you play, it's when you play them. And Utah caught USC at a real good time, in a real <laughs> good place, in a real favorable matchup. That's not going to be the case come Friday. Right. No, 100%. I don't think so. So I, I definitely agree with that. And four stops. Always got to create the four stops. You get the four stops when needed. I'm, I'm not going to put it so much on two turnovers, but get the four stops and at least one. And I think this is going to be one of those convincing, complete games that we're going to see. Fans, guess what? We also got a big surprise for you. Me feeling Ryan Dyru will be there in Vegas live for the Pac-12 championship. It all worked out for us, so we'll have a live post game recap for you. Hopefully, we might be able to get a tailgate. I think I'll be able to sneak away from work and get a tailgate. So, uh, maybe we could do something. We'll talk to Ryan. That's neither here nor there. It's always good. Thank you guys for supporting us. This has been the Salute Bet Online Salute Detroit podcast. Phil has been great. No it's way. time. We'll be there. Let's make it happen. Fight on. Fight on.